I said uh, I was going to do a video on the book that I'm currently reading for my cybersecurity pursuits, or so I shall call them. And uh, this book is, let's actually look at its cover. It's called Hands-On Hacking, Become an Expert, Next Gen Penetration Testing and Purple Teaming. So a lot of stuff in the subtitle, but um, I guess the book delivers to its promise. So let's actually look into the table of contents if you uh, actually want to go and study from it as well. Now, um, if uh, you want to just uh, finish watching this video right now, uh, I uh, the bottom line is that this book actually delivers to its purpose. So. I'm, um, I would say that I'm satisfied with what I'm getting and that is because it goes way in depth than many other books who try to cover everything and anything. So, um, and plus the fact that most of the books that uh, are currently online on any subject, not only books but also courses, are mostly tailored to, beginner, uh, to beginners and to, and to deal with beginner level stuff. So. This actually isn't the case because in every chapter it might start lightly, like actually telling you some introductory concepts in the topic that it's teaching. But then again, as you progress in the chapter, it actually goes uh, way more in depth than uh, any other uh, sort of like structured uh, material for a cybersecurity topic. Now, in this case, we talk about hands-on hacking and penetration testing. So, chapter one, hacking as a business case. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger. Uh, now, introductory concepts on the types of teams and their colors. Here we have um, basically for someone who might be a CISO or for someone in the in a leading position, maybe not very technical, this would be this this would be a good read. Now it talks about the in chapter two it talks about the ethics and the morality uh, and also sometimes uh, how easy it is to cross the line between something that's legal and something that's not so if you're actually doing penetration tests if you're very technical if you're a penetration tester or if you're doing some sort of a cybersecurity research you have to always remain within the scope and within the policy that you're working with so best advice is to always always remain within the scope and always read the scope beforehand uh, if you before you're actually going into whatever engagement uh, that you are actually doing so talks about criminal hacking legally gray as I've said pen testing methodologies it also talks about bug bounty programs and stuff like that now as, uh, as it is uh, the tradition with a lot of books building your hack box so the stuff that I actually I mean this type of stuff has been regurgitated and has been posted repeatedly hundreds of thousands of times we do not need more chapters on how to set up an operating system or a hacking box but anyways you don't even need one most of these days because uh, you just there are virtual uh, servers or VPS providers, for example, that um, do that for you. You can just pop up a Kali Linux machine in a um, Amazon in an AWS environment, and that's it. You don't need to install anything on your machine. Uh, plus. I actually don't use Kali Linux or Parrot. These I I find them uh, I find them so. Off note, again I'm not using Kali or Parrot or any other 
um, hacker-like distribution of Linux because I don't need 99% of the stuff that comes with it. Therefore, I'm actually using a VPS, which is very, I would say, uh, disposable, I guess that's the right word, because I have a few tools uh, that I'm using. I have a, a load of custom tools that I've built for myself. I'm using those tools when I, whenever I'm in a Linux environment. And when I do, when I engage in penetration tests, I actually use Burp Suite, the professional edition. That's just about it. Um, also, I do a lot of manual analysis, so that's only reading uh, JavaScript code uh, with a Beautifier plugin inside the web browser, so there is not much to it. You don't actually need a Kali Linux with all the fancy tools and stuff that you don't need. Anyways, I digress. Chapter 3. Chapter 4, Open Source Intelligence. So we get into OSINT. We, get, uh, we start from a higher level perspective um, over here. We have a few OSINT tools. Talks about Google dorking, harvesting the web, harvest. It talks about the harvester, recon ng, Maltigo, Shodan. Uh, and again, off note, uh, there are a lot of, in the recent three or four years, uh, there have been a lot of tools showed and like that have uh, sprung on the internet, which are much cheaper, much more affordable, and sometimes even have a broader scope when it comes to the types of things that it can actually cover. So Shodan is one of them. Uh, there is also Leak. X. So uh, leak X, leakx.net. You can just go to leakx.net and see what it's all about. Leakx.net. It's actually a website that scans the entire internet, or a platform that scans the entire internet, and actually allows you, as a cybersecurity researcher, to uh, uncover data leaks. Uh, of course, nobody pays you for doing that, so leakx.net is um, um, a, I would say, public service thing for cybersecurity researchers. I spend a lot of time on leakx uh, as a cybersecurity researcher, as an investigator, and uh, I've, <laughs> in the past two or three months, I've done more than 100 reports uh, and I've learned a lot in the meantime, so it I get a lot of satisfaction from actually uncovering uh, leaks that belong to major uh, major names in uh, everything. So uh, I cannot actually talk about the specifics, but I've I've uncovered some pretty serious stuff, uh, and I don't get anything for that. Just personal satisfaction. Uh, well, at least not for now. Maybe in the future, the guys at LeakX may be monetizing the platform somehow for the researchers, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, there is also another alternative to show that is FOFA, plus you have uh, some more expensive ones. I, I believe that Security Trails is more expensive. You have another one that's... Um, less expensive which is binary edge you also have um pretty recon i think the folks are from india that's also really cheap so yeah that's that uh that's uh chapter on osint with my caveats now i said that i like about what i like one thing that i like about this book is the fact that it goes very in depth and we can see that in chapter 5 when it starts explaining what DNS is and it goes into uh, a lot of hands-on applications for uh, investigating or actually uh, doing security tests when it comes to DNS. So really good on that one. And then on email. <laughs> so I'm actually understanding email um, from the very fundamental level. Uh, for the very first time in six or seven years. 
uh, you uh, you then go into uh, the web and here the web I think the web is a book in of itself not only a book but also maybe 10 books depending on what aspect of the, the web that you're actually looking into so uh, very basics how HTTP what is HTTP how it works what are cookies uh, for so for someone who's actually really good at learning via reading from a book this is a really uh, this is a really good resource for that and to actually tell you how I'm doing it I'm learning on my tablet and I'm taking notes I'm highlighting I'm interacting with the book as much as possible because I have a stylus pen with my uh, Samsung tablet and that's actually a very that's also a hands-on even though it might not appear so it's also a hands-on experience of learning so uh, one of the I would say two or three ways that I'm currently learning is via studying in from this book and other books that I might cover in future videos then via um, um, in in a previous video I said how I would learn uh, if or when I have time, I would actually go into platforms such as TryHack Me or Attack Defense Labs, um, depending on uh, which one you enjoy most. And both of those platforms are hands-on learning oriented platforms. And the third way and probably the best way that I learn is by actually doing stuff myself. So I learn a lot when I do pen tests or when I work on a private uh, program on uh, Synac. Uh, I learn a lot because uh, I read the documentation of whatever I'm testing so that's uh, probably the best way that I learn. So chapter 7 WWW vulnerabilities. Types of servers, types of platforms, Nginx, um, Linux, Microsoft, crawlers, uh, there could be no book without uh, the good old Nmap and Nikto. What else? I think we they've covered Nikto in a previous section, I guess. Or not. But uh, I do believe that Nikto is covered in... Uh, I never... I mostly never use Nikto or Nmap, so... Um, yeah. Derbuster... Um, the alternative for that, of course, is Fuff, which is what I'm using when I do a lot of recon. Uh, talking about HTTP authentication, uh, the wide known Shellshock, and I would suspect that in future books, as they are talking about Shellshock now, which it was, I believe, 2014 or 2015, in future books, they'll talk about Log4j. Chapter 8 goes into virtual private networks. Uh, for that matter, I would uh, suggest uh, someone who wants to learn about networking to actually take the Google Cloud uh, Network Security uh, Certification Path, which is, I think it's seven or eight courses on Coursera. Uh, I think it's $50 a month and you learn a lot. Uh, I've uh, personally done two or three courses in that certification and I should be resuming my learning at certain point in the near future. Not really sure when, but it's on my to-do list. Files and file sharing, chapter 9. Uh, then in-depth, sort of like an in-depth dive into Unix. Then databases. This is really useful when you're actually um, testing on cloud infrastructure. Then another dive into web applications and in this case from the perspective of vulnerabilities you have the OWASP top 10. I believe the recent uh, iteration was in 2021. Um, so your typical uh, approach would be port scanning, then a little bit of manual analysis and mapping, entry points. So this is all part of the recon. Uh, scanners, talks about scanners, uh, zap and burp. 
I believe these two would be so zap is completely free while burp uh, you can go way way uh, further just using the community edition but uh, of course if you have the money to pay for a license it's really worth it it's probably the best investment the best initial investment a cybersecurity professional who's uh, deep into technical stuff and who's doing a lot of work um, I think that's a very very good first investment now finding vulnerabilities then it goes through all the typical vulnerabilities that you're actually uh, looking into or over in your um, generic pen test such as injection input validation then broken authentication this is part of my favorites broken authentication sensitive data exposure logic flaws there isn't a lot on logic flaws broken access controls security misconfigurations these are also part of my favorites i don't do xss insecure deserialization um i also don't do a lot of injection uh, other than when i'm um, pen testing a certain application for a client so we had the dive uh, we had the deep dive on unix then we go into microsoft which is sort of like a very virgin territory for me because other than um, doing it for my oscp certification i haven't been uh, doing a lot of um, pen testing or work when it comes to uh, microsoft so this is one of my weak points which at some point in the future if i would consider it necessary i will be uh, getting more experience and knowledge on the topic then passwords i don't think this is really really relevant for the uh, year 2022 writing reports of course this is common sense but uh, still even if it's common sense there are many cybersecurity professionals who do not actually know how to write a decent report if i can put it that way and that's just about it so uh, my verdict for this book is that it's really good it delivers to it its purpose it might be good for someone who uh, who is a beginner but i would say that it's a really good resource for someone who's intermediate and wants to get a uh, good grip uh, when it comes to deeper insight into certain topics. I think a lacking point would be um, not strong emphasis on cloud infrastructure or cloud penetration testing or cloud security for that matter. But for that purpose, we have other books and I might be talking about them in the future because I think that cloud is actually uh not only something that's really relevant and has a big priority or big scoping in the present days but it's also going to be big in the future so everything that has to do with the cloud um with uh, the metaverse for that matter with uh, the internet of things with um ai all of these are uh, stuff that or topics that I want to focus on because I want to remain relevant as technology provides. I don't want to get stuck into looking for XSS or SQL injection when these are getting less and less prevalent and they're actually getting more and more obsolete for that matter. Okay, so this should be enough for one video um, in future videos I might go depending on whether or not this video is well received I might actually uh, do other book reviews or insights or overviews um, in future videos so let me know if this has been helpful